Okay, in this little video, I'm just going to do some recap of converting between binary and decimal and hexadecimal and arithmetic. Okay, so let's start off with just conversion. So we we write numbers like this. Oops, it says get pen help. We write numbers like this. 576. So what we've basically got is we've got column headings, units, tens and hundreds. Um, this is just a number. Deanery or decimal is how we as humans represent numbers. In a computer, we use binary. OK, so our starting point is if we get asked to write down an 8-bit number, we write down column headings. So this is a three-digit deanery number. So we've got three column headings. Ones, tens, hundreds, the next one will be a thousands. But in binary, they start at one. And then we go, right, OK, how do we get to the next column? Well, they just double up. So we go two, then we get four, then we get eight, then we get 16, then we get 32, then we get 64. It's a bad 64. Uh, and then we get 128. And that is eight bits of information. OK, so our first job is how do we convert from decimal? So let's pick a, a, a number to do it with. Let's have a go at the number 20 and we're going to try and write that in binary. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to start at this end with the biggest column and we're going to say, does 128 fit into 20? And we're going to say, no, it doesn't. It's bigger than it. And then we move down. And all we do is we move down the columns. So you'll see that again. So we go, right, does 64 fit into 20? No, it doesn't. So we put a zero. Does 32? No, 32 is bigger. Does 16? Yes, 16 does. So we put a one. That's our binary one. And we say, right, OK, what does that leave us left? So we have to do a little bit of a quick subtraction. So we go, oh, 16 from 20 is four. So we carry on. And we go, eight. Does that? subtract from four no it's too big four does so we say all ah, right four what does that leave us left so we go four minus four we say oh nothing left so we can't get two and we can't get one that is the simple process of converting from deanery or decimal to binary let's do another one let's do a bigger number so let's have a go at so let's scribble it out Let's have a go at 176, bigger number this time. So we're going to start with the largest column, which we, in computing terms, we call the most significant bit because it's the biggest column. And we say, oh, 128, we can take that away. So we can have one of those. Oops, hang on, what am I doing? Go mad. Put a one, but we now need to see what's left. So we go 128, subtract that from. 176 so we're going to have to borrow there so we get 8 from 16 is 8 2 from 6 is 4 and obviously 0 so we've got 48 left so let's move down the binary columns so we, we can't get 64 out of that but we can get a 32 so let's subtract 32 from that uh, 32 so that will give me 16 okay so oh next column is 16 so that leaves us with nothing left, so everything else is zero. So that's how you do decimal to binary. So if you're asked for four bits, write down four columns. If you're asked for six bits, write down six columns. If you're asked for eight, write down eight. And it's easy, you just start at one and you keep doubling up. Okay, so let's have a look at going the other way. So if we're given a binary number, so if someone gives us this number and they go, what is this number in decimal or deanery okay so you can look at it and when you get good at this you might say oh yeah i can read that straight away but let's help ourselves the easy way is to put column headings on so we start on the right hand side with one then we go two um then we got four so we're just doubling up then we got eight then we got 16 32, 
64 and 128 okay and converting this is easier than going from decimal to binary this is this is super easy all you got to do wherever you've got a one you write that column number down and add it up so you go right we've got a 64 we've got a 32 oops got a 32 got 16 no eights got four and we've got a two so we just need to add all those up okay um right so 64 and i i tend to do this in groups so i go like oh, 64 and 32 so that's 96 so those two make 96 so i'm splitting the arithmetic up for myself and then we've got 16 and 4 well that's nice because that that makes 20 then we've got a 2 okay so we can add these two sets of numbers together so i'm going to go 96 and 20 well that's obviously 116 plus 2 well, that's going to give me an answer of 118 so this number up here in binary looks like this in deanery they are the same number, they're just different ways of looking at them. Let's have it, let's do one more. Let's do a, a one that isn't eight bits this time. So let's do this number. It's just four bits. So I'm gonna do my column headings because I'm not gonna make a mistake. I'm gonna say one, two, four, and eight. And then I'm just gonna add up where we've got ones. So, 1010 is actually deanery 10. Okay, so that's the decimal and binary. Now that's a little bit tricky because we're going from a human format to a computer format, but there is another computer format, hexadecimal, and this is actually really easy to use. Okay, so let's start with a binary value. I'll just do an 8 bit value. So 1. one zero one one oh one and i'm gonna convert this to hexadecimal so i'm gonna go binary to hex as we call it okay now hex is base 16. so whereas binary is base 2 uh, and what be that means base that means how many symbols do you have? So in binary, you have the symbols 0 and 1. In hexadecimal, you've got 16 symbols. If we look at deanery or decimal, that's base 10. So that's got 10 symbols. So let's have a look at what those 10 symbols are. They are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to scroll up a little bit. 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we've got 10 symbols. In hexadecimal, starts off like deanery. So it goes 0, 1. And you can see they all start off like binary, 0 and 1. And then we just add more symbols. So then we get 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But we've still got another 6 symbols. So we don't have any more number digits. So what we do in hexadecimal, we use alphabetic characters. So we go, well, let's just start at the alphabet. So we go, the next symbol is A, B, C, D, E, and F. And that gives us 16 symbols. Okay, so you, you will see, come across these in computing. You'll have seen them in um, color codes, in paint programs and in web pages okay so it's quite a common thing and the reason it's common is because it 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 represents binary very easily and you can convert between binary and hexadecimal quick so let's have a look at how we do that okay so <clears throat> when we're we have a binary value what we do to convert binary to hexadecimal starting with the small if i just put my column headings on one two four a 16 32, 64, 1 to 8. If we start with the right hand end where we've got the one column and we say, right, okay, to convert this to hexadecimal, all I've got to do is group four bits together. So I'll look for the next group. So this is another group of four bits. 
Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to treat them just as they are, four bits. So I'm going to put column headings on. So one, two, four, eight. And for the other group, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to say it's just a four bit number. So one, two, four, eight. And the key to converting these to hexadecimal is to say, what is that four bit number? So in this first one, we've got an eight plus a four, which is 12, plus a one, which is 13. So that's 13. Okay. But that's not a hexadecimal yet. Let's have a look at this one. It's an eight and a two, so that's 10. But we need a single digit. So let's have a look at our hexadecimal. So this is the number zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we just keep going. 10 is A, 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 is D, 14 is E and 15 is F. So these two numbers actually 10 is 8. Let's just change colour. So 10 is represented by the hexadecimal A and 13 is by the hexadecimal D. So this value here actually is A D. Now it's important you put them the right way around. Don't put D A. It's a on the left hand side and then D. Okay, so whenever you're doing hexadecimal, give yourself a little number line like this. Where you've got 0 to 15 and you just write 0 to 9, A to F. So let's have a look at another one. So back to my black pen. So I'm going to have this number. So I'm going to go 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. So I'm looking for groups and you can see I've split the binary number. It can help when you're reading binary, but I'm going to say, right, well, I've got this group of four and I've got this group of four. And I'm just going to put column headings on for four bits. I'm going to say one, two, four, eight. And I'm going to say one, two, four, eight. So I'm going to read these numbers. So I've got eight plus four is 12 plus another two is 14 plus one is 15 so that is f this one we've got a four and a two which is six but actually six is still six in hexadecimal so that number is f six and it's this is a lot quicker than having to add 64s and 128s together so that's why it's quick it's nice and it's compact so instead of four bits we can have just one uh, character instead of four characters with so this eight bit number which takes eight characters of space we can write down really compact okay right converting the other way going from a hexadecimal number so let's say i had something like c7 and i want to know what that was in binary well again this is quite straightforward this becomes four bits and the seven becomes four bits. So each hexadecimal digit represents four bits. So all we've got to do is work out what is C and what is seven and write down the bit pattern. So if we look at C, C is 12. So we've got four bits. So we're going to go one, two, four, eight. And we're going to write down what 12 is in binary. So 12, we go, right, well, we'll have an 8 and we'll have a 2. That will give me 12. So C is that. And then we do the same for the 7. Well, same thing again. So we've got 1, 2, 4, 8, because it's just a 4-bit value. And we go, right, OK, we've got no 8, but we've got a 4 and a 2 and a 1 give me 7. So C7 is the equivalent to 1, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 1, 1 in binary. Let's do one more. Um, so oh, let me let me scroll that so you can still see them. I'll do it over here so you can see the number line still. Right. So let's have a go. At, let's do one that's bigger. Let's do 7 F 8 D. Now I've written those in lower case because sometimes it's less confusing with the uh, digits, but it doesn't matter. So each one of these is four bits. 
So we need one, two, four, eight. For this one, we need a one, two, four, eight. For this one, we need a one, two, four, eight. So this is going to be a 16 bit number. One, two, four, eight. So let's let's do these. So look, D. D is 13. So 13, we can have an 8 and a 4, which gives us 12, and we need another 1. So that's D. That was our D. Let's have a look at 8. Well, 8 is 8. 8 is nice because there's a column there. So we can say, well, it's an 8 and nothing else. That was 8. Then we've got F. F is everything. So it's 15. So we need all of them to write down F. And then the final one, 7, which we did on the previous one. So we've got no eights, but we've got four, a two, and a one. And that's all there is to convert in between hexadecimal and binary. And binary and hexadecimal, it's quite simple. Right, the final thing I want to show you in this video is just addition. How to add up two binary values. So let's have a look what we got. So we got, let's add two numbers together. One, zero, one, O, oh, and zero, zero, one, one. And we're going to add them together. Now it's just long addition. Just like you would do in normal deanery maths. You add the corresponding columns together. And if you get a carry, you carry the number on. So before we start, we can work out what these binary numbers are. So let's put column ends on. So I can look at this and I can say, oh, actually, that number is a four and a one. So that's actually the number five. And this is a two and a one. So that's actually the number three. So the answer we get we can check. We hopefully, when we add three and five together, we'll get eight. Okay, so let's just go through this process. So we go one and one. And we can only put one digit down, just like you can in normal deanery mathematics. So we go no, one and one. Oh, hang on a minute. That's one and one is two. What does, we can't write a two because it's binary. But we know if we do just some basic bits here two is one zero so actually what we've got is zero carry one now i'll put my carries in a different color i always write my carries here but you might have got into the habit of putting carries at the bottom all right so just do whatever suits you right and then i've got a column so I say naught and one, but I've got to include the carry. So I've got naught, one and one. Oh, that's two again. So that's naught, carry one. So I'll do me carry in blue. This was a quick way of doing that. Okay, now just move on. And I go, right, okay, third column. One, zero and one. So that's two again, isn't it? So that's naught, carry one. Oops, nearly did it in black. Did it in blue. And then I do my final column and I go naught, naught and one, which is one. And you can see... That we've got an eight, no fours, no twos, no ones. So that is eight. And that's all it is. There is one other thing that can happen. So let's do let's do another one. So let's add eight. And let's add the number. Two to it. Let's try this one. So we know that's eight. I'll, I'll keep it in black this time. And I know that's two. So we should get the answer 10. Now you might be able to see what 10 is in binary and write it straight down. But let's just work it through. So we've got naught and naught is one. Naught and one is one. Naught and naught is naught. One and naught is one. And yeah, that is, if we put column headings just underneath, but they're not really column headings then, are they? Um, but there you go. Um, we've got an 8 and a 2, which is 10. Excellent. One thing that you might get is you might get something like this. So let's try adding 8. And we're going to add it to 7. So we've got an 8. And we've got 7. Now, let's see what we get. 8 and 7 should be 15. So let's see what we get. Not and one is one. Not and one is one. Not and one is one. One and more is one. Excellent. Fifteen. 
So you can see that it's just normal arithmetic. You just got noughts and ones. It's actually simpler because there's not as much to do. Let's do one more just to show you a potential problem. Let's add 12 to 7. Now on a computer, when it's doing binary arithmetic, if it's using four bits, its answer will be in four bits. Okay, because you can't just add extra bits on, on a computer, it's fixed. Okay, so let's just have a look at what we get as an answer for this. So we've got 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1, right. 1 and 1 is 2, so we get 0, carry 1. 1, 0 and 1 is 2. Oh, so that's 0, carry 1. So this is what we call a carry bit. Now, what we've actually got, <coughs> we know if we do the math in deanery, we should get the number uh, 19. But in four bits, the biggest number we can represent is 15. So in four bits, so if we look at this number now, we've got three. So this looks like three if we look at this part of it, the four bits. So that represents three, which isn't the right answer. We thought it should have been 19. What's happened is the number that we've generated when we added these two together is bigger than four bits. It's five bits. So we've got a process called overflow where the number we've got is too big to hold. And this is a constant problem in um, computer science. Number too large. Because we were only using four bits. If we look at that number, so let's write out the full thing, including the carry. So we've got one, one, zero, zero, one and we put some column headings on one two four eight sixteen you can see that we've got a sixteen plus two plus one which does equal nineteen but when we do arithmetic like this we we would say the answer is zero zero one one with a carry of one and we would identify in a question we would say oh overflows happened and we'd write that bit in red, the 0011, as our answer. Okay. But we would let the examiner know that we are aware that this number is correct if we include the carry. But we can't. So we flag it. And you'll see that the CPU does this if you carry on to do GCSE. Um, we flag it. The CPU uses the arithmetic and logic unit and goes, oh, hang on a minute, we did a calculation, but it's too big. So I'm just letting you know it's too big. You can take steps. It's beyond GCSE uh, level of computer science, but you can take steps to use that information to fix this problem. But it is overflow. Right, I hope that little video helps some people with the binary stuff. If you want me to do any little recaps on anything else, I'll knock some, let me know don't email me. Let me know on the Teams. Go onto the Teams pages um, and post a message uh, so that I can respond to you. Okay? Cheers.